white cliffs of Dover look out across the English Channel, across the 20 miles that separate England from the continent. A 20 mile moat which for hundreds of years has stopped would-be invaders. A 20 mile barrier to trade and a source of inconvenience to tourists. But is this barrier really necessary today? At one time, the only way of getting from Birkenhead to Liverpool on the other side of the Mersey was by ferry. Now you can travel under the Mersey by rail or drive under it in your car. have dreamed of a tunnel like this under the English Channel for the past 150 years. A tunnel that would carry you just as swiftly and easily from England to France. But soldiers and politicians opposed it. They said England could not risk losing her natural defences, and many of them still say so. But of course, in these days of supersonic flight, the moat is no longer such an obstacle. Today, the prospects of a tunnel to Calais are again being discussed. And for more than two years, a study group has been trying to find out whether it's possible to build a channel tunnel. I am one of a number of civil engineers who are studying this. The difficulty in digging a tunnel depends upon the ground in which you have to dig it. It's a big job to dig a tunnel from England to France because of its length and because of the depth of water. But in the case of the Channel Tunnel, there is one remarkable feature which will help. A bed of very good chalk extends from Dover under the Channel to Calais. This was proved by French and British engineers in 1876. This line shows how the tunnel might run from Dover to Calais in the lower chalk. And this section across the tunnel shows how the different beds dip towards the North Sea. This isn't the ordinary white chalk which we see in the cliffs, but the grey lower chalk, which has very few cracks in it. The difference is this. Here is the Dartford Tunnel, which is being built at this moment under the River Thames, in the upper white chalk. It is a wet and dirty job. There is 50 feet of water above these men's heads, and it leaks through the chalk and mud in which they are tunnelling. The only way of keeping out the water is to fill the tunnel with compressed air, and these men, like divers, work under pressure. In order to enter, they go into an airlock, where the pressure is raised to that inside the tunnel. It does not feel any different working in compressed air, but there is the chance of getting a temporary but painful condition called bends. We could not build a channel tunnel in compressed air because of the great depth of water. The pressure would be too great for men to work in, but we have a very good way out. We have the grey lower chalk. Here's a piece of it, solid and watertight. Halfway between Dover and Folkestone, the grey chalk comes to the surface. 75 years ago, engineers built a trial tunnel there to see if it was really watertight. At the same time, French engineers dug a shaft on the cliff tops at Calais and tunnelled under the sea for almost a mile towards England. Both tunnels were dry, but what lay in between? The French had shown years ago that the chalk ran right across, but was it thick enough to take a tunnel? Were there cracks in it, or holes that would have to be avoided? Last year, a research boat went backwards and forwards over the whole area, making a kind of radar picture of the seabed and the position of the grey chalk beneath it. This was done by taking electrical soundings and lifting samples from the seabed, not only to check the position of the chalk, but to examine it for possible faults.
was a continual process of checking and rechecking. Work continues, but there's always time for a cup of tea. Another part of this work was the actual drilling of holes in the bottom of the sea. A tank landing craft is used with a platform over the side, and the drill is rather like those used for boring oil wells. Six anchors are used to keep the ship steady in the strong current. And as the tide rises and falls, the anchor chains are adjusted so that the ship stays in the same position. A large pipe called a casing is driven into the sea bottom and inside this goes the borer. Drilling holes under the sea is a skilled job and some holes are more than 200 feet deep. One way of finding out what the chalk is like at the bottom of the hole is with this instrument called a log. It is lowered down the hole and records the conditions there. But the main point of drilling these holes is to get actual samples of the grey chalk. Every 10 feet, this piece of equipment, which is rather like an apple corer, is pulled up and the core of rock is taken out and sent to the laboratory for testing. The strength of this core of chalk, which for thousands of years was 200 feet below the channel, is tested in a special machine. Tests like this will show whether the tunnel is an engineering possibility and many experts have little doubt about the answer. So, shall we see an end to all this? There are still military objections to be argued out, and the Channel Tunnel would have some stiff competition to meet. The air ferry is tremendously successful. Could a Channel Tunnel compete with it? Or with a fast ship? or a helicopter. Meantime, there are many alternative ways of crossing the channel. Some ways, of course, are easier than others.